Hey everyone, in this video, I'm going to tell you about the back pain, its causes, its risk factors, how to diagnose it and its remedies. Back pain is one of the most common causes for patients to seek emergency care and it has a broad range of potential causes. About 23% of world's adults suffer from chronic low back pain. Let's now discuss the risk factors for lower back pain. First is age. People over 30 years have more back pain. Intervertebral discs wear away with age. As the discs weaken and wear down, pain and stiffness can be felt. Second is weight. Overweight or obese people carry extra weight and are more likely to have back pain. Excess weight puts pressure on their joints and discs. So this is what leads to back pain. Third is overall health of the individual. Weakened abdominal muscles can't support your spine and this can lead to back strains and sprains. People who smoke, drink alcohol excessively or live a sedentary lifestyle also have a higher risk of back pain. Fourth is occupation and lifestyle. Jobs and activities that require heavy lifting or bending can increase the risk of a back injury and this can again lead to back pain. Fifth is structural problems. So severe back pain can result from conditions such as scoliosis, which can change your spine alignment. Sixth is diseases. So people who have family history of osteoarthritis, certain types of cancer and other diseases may have a higher risk of low back pain. Seventh is mental health. Back pain can also result from depression and anxiety. Let's now discuss the symptoms of lower back pain. Symptoms of lower back pain can come on suddenly or they may appear gradually. Sometimes the pain occurs after a specific event such as bending to pick something up. Other times you may not know what has caused the pain. Pain may be sharp or dull and achy and it may radiate to your bottom or down the back of your legs especially in case of sciatica. The pain may make it hard to move or stand up straight. You may stand crooked or bent with your torso off to the side rather than aligned with your spine. Your lower back may look flat instead of being curved. You may notice decreased range of motion. The pain that comes on suddenly is acute whereas the pain that lasts more than 3 months is considered chronic. You should see a doctor if you have a back pain after a fall or injury or if you have back pain with bowel or bladder control problems. There is leg weakness, fever or pain when coughing or peeing, then you should definitely see your doctor. Let's now go to the causes of back pain. First one is tight hamstrings. Tight hamstring muscles are actually a common contributor to lower back pain. Tight hamstrings will pull on ischial tuberosities, one of the areas of your pubic bone. This tends to tilt your pelvis backwards. Joints adjacent to this move in what is called a coupled fashion. So when the pelvis tilts back, the vertebrae in your lower back flex forward and this can strain the ligaments that surround your vertebrae and also make bulging discs in your back worse. So it can worsen your pain. Second is strains and sprains. Back strains and sprains along with tight hamstrings are one of the most common cause of back pain. You can injure muscles, tendons or ligaments by lifting something too heavy or not lifting it in a proper posture. Some people strain their back while sneezing or coughing or twisting or bending over. Third is fracture. The bones in the spine can break during an accident like a car crash or a fall. Certain conditions such as spondylosis or osteoporosis can increase your risk of fractures. Fourth is arthritis. Osteoarthritis is the most common type of arthritis to cause lower back pain. Ankylosing spondylitis causes lower back pain, inflammation and stiffness in the spine. Fifth one is diseases. Spine tumors, infections and several types of cancer can cause back pain. Other conditions can cause back pain too. These include kidney stones and abdominal aortic aneurysm. Sixth one is spondylolisthesis. This condition causes the vertebrae in the spine to slip out of place. 
So spondylolisthesis leads to lower back pain and often leg pain as well. The seventh reason for your back pain may be your job. If your job involves lifting, pulling or anything that twists the spine, it may contribute to back pain. Sitting at a desk all day, especially if your chair is uncomfortable or you tend to slouch, even that can lead to back pain. Eighth, even your bag may be the reason you are suffering from back pain. Although you may wear your purse, your backpack or your briefcase over your shoulder, it is the lower back that supports the upper body, including any additional weight you carry. So an overstuffed or a heavy bag can strain the lower back, especially if you carry it every day. If you need to carry a heavy load, you should consider switching to a wheeled briefcase instead. Next is workout. So overworking is one of the most common causes of overextended muscles, which may even lead to lower back pain. You are especially vulnerable if you tend to be inactive during the entire week and then spend hours at the gym or doing other activities on the weekend. Next is posture. Your back supports weight best when you don't slouch. This means sitting with good lumbar support for your lower back and shoulders. When standing, keep your weight evenly balanced on both feet. So if you keep a proper posture, you might be able to avoid back pain. Next is herniated disc. The vertebrae are cushioned by intervertebral discs that are prone to wear and tear from aging and injuries. A weakened disc may rupture or bulge, putting pressure on the spinal nerve roots. This is known as a herniated disc and it can cause intense pain. There are several chronic conditions that may cause back pain. And these include, first, spinal stenosis. So spinal stenosis is a narrowing of the space around the spinal cord. And this can put pressure on the spinal nerves, which will lead to back pain. Second is ankylosing spondylitis. Ankylosing spondylitis inflames the joints of the spine and sometimes the shoulders, hips, ribs and other areas as well. It causes chronic back pain and stiffness and in serious cases, spinal vertebrae starts to fuse. That is, it starts to grow together. Third is fibromyalgia which causes widespread muscle aches, including the back pain. Other reasons your lower back may hurt include being overweight, being sedentary and lifting heavy stuff on the job. Let's now see how the lower back pain is diagnosed. To help your doctor diagnose the source of lower back pain, you should be specific in describing the type of pain that you are experiencing. That is when it started, the related symptoms, and any history of chronic conditions that you may be suffering from. Your doctor may also order some investigations like X-ray, CT or MRI scans before starting treatment. Electromyography that is EMG is a test for nerves and muscles and it may be used to check for neuropathy that is for any kind of nerve damage. So if you have a nerve damage, you might experience some tingling or numbness in your legs. Let's now discuss various treatment modalities for lower back pain. First is home care. Back pain due to muscle strain usually gets better on its own, but you can use a heating pad or warm baths, which may provide temporary relief from pain. When your back hurts, you may not feel like getting out of bed, but if the problem is muscle strain, then it is recommended that you return to your normal activity as soon as possible. Studies have suggested that any more than a day or two of bed rest can actually make the pain worse and may reduce your muscle tone and flexibility. So return to your activity as soon as possible. Second is stretching the tight hamstrings. Lengthening your hamstrings is the key to moving your body as it is intended to and not putting unnecessary stress on your spine. When your hamstrings are relaxed, it allows your pelvis to tilt forwards and this takes the strain off the ligaments and discs. Here are some stretches that can gradually lengthen and reduce tension in the hamstring muscles and in turn reduce the stress felt in the lower back. So in the first stretch, while standing, bend forward at the waist with arms hanging down toward the ground and with legs straight without locking the knees. Now try to touch the toes but please do not strain to do so. And stop bending forward when a slight pulling sensation is felt in the hamstrings. 
Now, this form of exercise may not always be recommended because it may be difficult to do for some people and it may even exacerbate pain from a lumbar herniated disc or spondylolisthesis or from some other specific conditions. The second stretch is while you are sitting on a chair, place one leg straight out on another chair which is placed in front of you. Now reach towards the toes and stretch one leg at a time. In the third stretch, while lying on the back, hold each end of a rolled up towel and wrap it around the foot. Then pull the leg up in front of the body to feel a slight stretch in the hamstring muscles. In the fourth stretch, lie on the floor with your buttocks against the wall and the legs stretched up against the wall. Try to push the knee as straight as possible. This stretch is usually gentle on the lower back as it places minimal stress on the low back and the body is supported while you are lying down. So hamstring stretches have been shown to be most effective when done for a duration of about 30 to 60 seconds. Third is yoga. If your back pain doesn't go away in 3 months, you may try yoga as well. Just make sure that you get expert instructions so you don't hurt yourself while doing yoga improperly. Fourth is spinal manipulation. Chiropractors and some orthopedic surgeons may try to move the joints of your spine to treat the lower back pain. This treatment is not appropriate for everyone. So be sure to tell your provider about all your symptoms and health issues. Fifth is massage. Massage may relieve chronic low back pain, especially when combined with exercise and stretching. It has been noted that patients who did all three, that is exercise, stretching and massage, were able to move around easier and had less short term and long term pain. So massage may be beneficial to some people. Next is medications. Mild back pain often feels better with over-the-counter pain relievers like acetaminophen, ibuprofen or naproxen. You may even try pain relieving creams for your muscle aches. Other medicines like calcium, vitamin D, bisphosphonates, teriparatides and parathyroid hormones may be helpful for treating osteoporosis. So do consult your doctor before you start any medication. Next is surgery. If long lasting back pain is interfering with your daily life and other treatments have not provided relief, you may be a candidate for surgery. Depending on the cause of your pain, a surgeon may remove a herniated disc, widen the space around the spinal cord and they may also need to fuse two spinal vertebrae together. Next is physical therapy. If back pain has left you inactive for a long time, a rehabilitation program can help you strengthen your muscles and get back to your daily activities. A physical therapist can guide you through stretches, strength exercises and low impact cardio and this will help you to be fitter without straining your back. Next is strengthening your back. Strength training can help your lower back. In flexion exercises, you bend forward to stretch and strengthen the muscles of the back and hips. In extension exercises, you bend backward to develop the muscles that support the spine. Do talk to your doctor or physical therapist about the exercises that are safer for you. Let's now discuss the ways to prevent the lower back pain. Now there is no sure way to prevent back pain as you age, but there are steps you can take to lower the risk. First of all, you should stay at a healthy weight. Second, you should exercise regularly. Third. Strengthen your abdominal muscles. Pilates and other exercise programs can strengthen your core muscles which support your spine. Fourth, lift weight with your legs, not your back. You should hold heavy items close to your body and try not to twist your torso while you are trying to lift the weight. Fifth one, make sure your workstation position isn't contributing to your pain. That is, you should maintain a proper posture while you are working. Now, finally, to answer the question about when you should see your healthcare provider about your lower back pain. So you should see a healthcare provider if you have a pain that doesn't get better after about a week of at home care. If you have tingling, numbness, weakness or pain in your buttocks or legs. If you have severe pain or muscle spasms that interfere with your normal activity. 
and if you have fever weight loss bowel or bladder problems or other unexplained symptoms so that's all for now i hope the video was helpful thank you